So, yeah, Enrico Renz of Red Herring. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Stephen Nicleva, also, of Red Herring, in the apartment of Stephen Nicleva. Um there's a really funny story behind that, but uh, <laughs> you don't have to go into every story. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so you got you got a tale. But uh, I was just talking about the um, yeah, my very first recording I did with Baron, and um, and there was first picture on an album cover. Yeah, let's get right in there. Of a, yeah, of a young Stephen uh, Um but. So th this was a two-track recording, so it's al almost like uh, this, you know, like the equivalent of turning on your phone these days, right? But um, and it was recorded at uh, Capilano College before it was university. Actually, it was just I think maybe even one building or something at that point. It was just Capilano was, was going and and uh, knew knew this person that was in sort of the audiovisual and, he, and that's what the recording is. So it's fairly very basic, but. What's interesting is that um, Keith Millard was the fellow that introduced uh, Enrico to me. So uh, Keith was playing bass with Farron at the time, um, but he was really a, a writer and uh, has, you know, at least half a dozen novels out there. And then later on, he uh, uh, got teaching at UBC in the creative writing department. And I think he was teaching a course on songwriting okay and Enrico was going going to university there and so I get a call from from Keith he's out I've got this guy who's writing some really interesting material he's, you come and have a listen you should have a listen so that's actually how the, the beginning of what became red herring really started off from from that you know I did listen to what Enrico is doing <clears throat> and it was some um, yeah, it was very kind of, kind of interesting and different. Uh, I was, you know, trying to learn about jazz at the time, um, but, but Enrico's stuff was, well, it was kind of, uh, I don't know, sort of quirky rock, rock and roll, and um, really kind of caught my ear, and we uh, got together and tried to write the songs out and tried to find players to play with, and it was like, that, at that point, um, there was sort of the punk scene. We'd get together with some of the kind of the punk players, and they had the great energy, but some of the stuff was a bit complicated. We'd get together with some of the jazz players, and and they could play all the complicated stuff, but maybe didn't quite have the, the you know, oh. the groove of things. So okay. Like, uh, no, let's get rid of this. We can do part one here, or no, part two. Enrico? Yeah, you're carrying on. That's my, my <laughs> car here. Uh, uh, Hello? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was interesting. Um, uh, at that time, because uh, uh, Keith was a, a very interesting writer and and thinker, and when I took that the songwriting course, I was um, I was actually studying philosophy at the time. That was my thing, and uh, uh, songwriting was something I was doing on the side, and and there was this course uh, being offered, so. Uh, I checked it out, and uh, he started out by playing uh, um, some of his favorite uh, songs and talking about why he thought they were interesting. And that really got me thinking, yeah, this, uh, you know, songwriting can be uh, um, a significant form of expression. And uh, so through, throughout that course, we had really interesting conversations. Did uh, any of those songs make a particular impact on you? Were the ones that really played an influence in developing your own songwriting abilities? Or? Um, well, I, th I think one of one of the things one of the values that that I've always had was was the idea of being original and trying not to be too influenced but you can't help being influenced right right you pick up stuff from from other people but but I was never much into 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 trying to write like somebody else 
uh, I was more interested in in uh, what what makes something work. Why why do I get uh, why do I get affected by by certain kind, mm -hmm. of, kind of kind of sounds or uh, certain words. Or, and, and freshness is definitely something that it's, that's mm -hmm. always been important to me, um, which is interesting because as, as I've gotten older, I've gotten, I started to to develop a taste for, for, for uh, stuff that's been around for a long time. Like I, I was never a blues fan until. You know, started hanging out with you, and, and didn't really get jazz until you and Theo introduced me to it. Uh, and and uh, I remember even the first time I heard Jimi Hendrix, I didn't get him at all. Uh, so it took a long time to start to appreciate uh, older forms and. and playing in styles that, that were already established. I was always looking for the, the brand new thing, right? The thing mm -hmm. that hasn't existed yet. Which, so. which is interesting, because when, um, that's what was interesting when I got together with Enrico, was that I kind of feel like I had to sort of start coming up with a vocabulary and, and uh, sounds that would suit the songs. And uh, so I started exploring different guitar pedals and, you know, trying to, Great sound, so it became a bit of a sound collage almost at times, uh, and that was uh, and that was a neat neat thing. I mean, for me, it's always about you have to get excitement from the songs, and then they move you and you need to to do something. So that was uh, so the red herring was you know where you brought that out. How did you guys connect with Steve and Martin? Well, I think I was talking about trying to get over the jazz and the punk players and. Yep. Uh, it was it was it took a few years actually, um, but uh, gr gradually through different connections we came across these two guys that really kind of fit and uh, we started doing some gigs and then uh, we heard about the um, this band thing, which was what was it called the uh, the contest that we went into. Shindig? Shindig. Shindig. Yeah. And it turned out, you didn't realize that, that was the very first Shindig. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, we were kind of the underdog compared to these other bands because we were a very new band and people didn't really know us very well, whereas these other bands were kind of had been around. And so we were the underdog that, that came up there and, and won, won the Shindig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from that, um, as part of it, we, we were able to get some recording time and we gradually, you know, put that into our our recording here yeah i didn't bring my shindig album but i do have the vinyl that came out right what are the songs that are on there do you remember what off it because they're songs that aren't actually on taste tests i think or at least one of them is. yeah i think i think that's right i think it's one of them one of them that's that that's uh not not on that uh can't remember right now mm -hmm. hmm. okay you have the album? I have the album, yeah. Well, I, I can go get well, you the album. Have... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That'll make it easy. Yeah. There we are. Was the last time you saw that, Enrico? <laughs> Enrico maybe didn't, never even saw it. Who knows? Yeah. And as far as I know, that's the only shindig that actually yeah. had vinyl. Oh yeah. So there's the brain song uh, that that was on there. Tone of voice. Okay. Tone of voice. I've been wanting to bring that song back. Oh yeah. There it is. It's but it's tone of voice. That's Can you put it on? Can we hear? Yeah, this one has really interesting guitar playing with uh, Stephen using guitar as a uh, percussive device. Okay. Lo lots of slides, lots of behind the nut stuff. And uh, 
it's one that we we used to play a lot back in the day, but I haven't haven't since. So I'm keen to hear it again. Try and watch number three. All the brain songs on here too. Yeah. You guys have done the brain song recently, haven't you? Yeah, we yeah. did the brain song. How does that one go again, Enrico? Oh, you're 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 thinking you're you're thinking of tough enough. You're thinking of tough enough. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. So, so we'll keep this going for another few minutes if, if we can. Uh, maybe we can do another clip later. But um, I, I wanted to just ask about that song. Like, so these are your lyrics, and this is about authoritarianism, yeah. or yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, I always had a thing about work. Yeah, people being over others, and uh, and. A lot of it had to do with the tone of voice. <laughs> it did, it did. It's interesting, yeah. Yeah. Um, I get volume more than tone. Could you please keep it down a little? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so was that really early on? Was that like one of the first songs you guys wrote together? Or like had you, you hadn't gigged before the shindig or? Yeah, we, we had been doing some shows maybe just for a few months or years like that prior, okay. prior to the shindig how, how long a set did you have what do you, what, what do you remember about that well, well, let's round up talking about shindig we do a second clip later but. well um, yeah well I, I remember we had these fish lures that we kind of wore like on our on our jackets which was you know, the place place was packed it was the Savoy uh, which was the sister club of the railway club mm -hmm. and you know play, place was packed and you know, we went in there with our, you know, our set ready to go. And, yeah, 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 yeah. All the fish lures there. You know the hoochies? The hoochies? Yeah, they're the, they're the little rubber octop octopi. Okay. Right. So I had uh, I had a West Western style fringe uh, shirt, but instead of fringes, I had these little octopi <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm dropping records. <laughs> <laughs> who was the who, who? Somebody told me that the who was it that stole one of those, ripped it off my shirt. I didn't even know about it, and it turned out to be a really well-known drummer. 
from what was the band? Well, anyways, <laughs> well, <laughs> don't want to name them on the yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but, uh, the Hootie yeah. Thief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I wonder if he still yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. yeah. So next time we'll and then the band is actually going to work on a new recording. It's hard to believe from you know from that many years ago. The, Four of the original members were all still alive. We're still playing music, and we're going to be doing another recording. And we'll talk about that another time. All right. Yeah. Okay. Any final thoughts on the shindig, Enrico? Uh, we're all still alive. Is, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Cheers.